And our last session is actually, we've moved from kind of people to sustainability and growth. And now we're gonna to go to places. And I'm delighted to uh, invite my fellow board member for our member, uh, Catherine Shearer, who is the founder of h &I Adventures. Uh, a, oh, we all wanna go on mountain bike holidays, don't we, Catherine? More than anything else that's, that's on the list. So uh, she's gonna take on uh, the next panel, which is investing in more MTB friendly places. So over to you, Catherine. Thank you, Kevin, and um, really big thanks to all of our panelists so far. The discussions have been incredibly, uh, I mean, really high, high level and really interesting. And as Kevin said, I think there will be lots of, lots of connection and lots of networking happening after this. So our next panel is about, is, is focusing on investing on more mountain biking friendly places. And that's both from a local community perspective and, uh, and a wider tourism perspective. And we're really delighted to have on our last panel um, three really expert speakers uh, from different, different parts of the industry and different countries indeed. First of all, I'd like to introduce Matilda Skoll Christensen, research assistant at the University of Southern Denmark, who has recently completed a master's in sport and health science. Uh, conducting research into the co-production of mountain bike trails in Denmark, which we're looking forward to, to hearing about. Then we have Lars Vro Jensen, project manager of the DIRT project, Eras DIRT and Erasmus Plus project, which was mentioned previously and is focusing on creating formal educational frameworks for trail builders. And Lars has also been involved in helping the Hallandal region of Norway to become a mountain bike tourism destination. And last but not least, we have Diana Garcia Trujillo, who is Master in Sustainable Tourism Destinations and Regional Planning, and also author of a really um, pertinent report at the moment called When We Can Travel Again. So yeah, as I say, we have um, this local community perspective and also this uh, and there's also linking into a tourism perspective of mountain biking friendly destinations and if I could start with you Mathilde um, it would be great to hear a little bit more about your research so you've been conducting research on the co-production of mountain bike trails in Denmark as I mentioned and one aspect of that research focuses on how the public sector and local communities work together to co-develop trails in Denmark. And it would be really, I'm really keen to hear um, from, from your research, what kind of collaborative partnership models between the three major stakeholders, that's the local mountain bike groups, the municipalities and the land management agencies, what sort of collaborative partnership models have you identified um, between these, these um, stakeholders? Yes, uh, thank you, Catherine. Um, in one of our studies, we have identified um, three different uh, ways or models of co-production and trail building. And uh, we have examined uh, how uh, trail building uh, is uh, organized and practiced in three Danish municipalities which have all be, been given high priority to, uh, to trail building. And, uh, and in all the three models that we have uh, identified, um, they, uh, the, both uh, voluntary trail building builders and uh, municipal employees and local departments of the Danish Nature Agency are involved. And uh, the volunteers are contributing, contributing to both the development, the planning and the construction of the trails. And usually it's uh, also the volunteers who, who takes the initiative to build new, uh, new trails in these municipalities. Uh, however, there are also some differences between the models uh, which seem to affect the settings for trail building in, in each municipality. And first we have identified a model which uh, mainly are characterized by the fact that the municipality has hired a professional trail builder full time uh, who contributes to the development and the planning and, and the construction of the trails. And uh, he also takes care of the, um, 
the communication between the volunteers and the public authorities. And uh, hiring a, a professional trail builder on one hand can make the, the, the trail building more manageable for the volunteers. And it, uh, it can make it easier to, to have more trails built in a shorter span time. But on the other hand, uh, it also involves risks that the responsibility um, is in a way taken away from the volunteers. And uh, that can make it more difficult to recruit strongly committed trail builders. And uh, furthermore, it's um, important to keep in mind also that the building more trails uh, re also require more uh, more maintenance uh, and if you as a municipality want the volunteers to um, to um, contribute to the maintenance of the trails uh, you have to to be aware that that them um, um, that you have to ensure a balance between the ambitions of the authorities and the actual capacity among the volunteers Secondly, we have also identified a, a model which is characterized by the fact that, that the um, different voluntary groups are united in one overall uh, trail builder association, which takes care of all the communication between the volunteers and the public authorities. Uh, in a way, this gives uh, the volunteers a stronger voice in this collaborative partnership, but uh, at the same time, it um, it can increase the distance between the single trail builder on the track and then there are the authorities. This uh, model is also characterized by the fact that the trail building actually has reached the annual budget in the present municipality, uh, which means that the um, voluntary trail builders uh, are guaranteed more or less uh, a certain amount of economic um, support each year. And um, this, um, this makes, seems to make it easier for the trail builders to, to work on more long-term plans um, yeah, in contrast to those volunteers who have to continue, continuously uh, apply for, for funding. Yeah. And uh, then we have the, the third model, which um, uh, is characterized by, by the voluntary trail builder groups working individually. So, uh, they handle all the communication uh, with the public authorities by themselves. Um, and um, in that way, they have a close um, connection to the authorities, each um, uh, voluntary trail builder club or uh, association. But, um, but at the same time, it leaves each uh, association with a, with a huge task uh, while they have the responsibility for all the process uh, in trail building, yeah, yeah. So, as on basis of uh, based on on our findings, we cannot determine one model as better than the other. But hopefully, describing different ways of organizing and practicing this uh, trail building, um, we can inspire everyone with interest in this area to um, to work on co-production in trail building. And uh, hopefully it can shed light on some of the possibilities and some of the dilemmas which can be uh, relevant to have in mind um, working on collaborative partnerships in trail building. You, you mentioned in one of the models um, there can be, you know, where the volunteers are really active and are taking this role, there can be perhaps a, a difference in the volunteer competencies and the, and the ambitions of the municipality and that um, comes into to Mars you're working on the, the dirt project no project I'm going for the dirt project and to do and, and what the, the, the aim of the dirt project is to develop this educational a proper educational framework for trail builders um, and with your work in the Hallandale region of, of Norway, which is historically been a, a winter and winter tourism destination, winter tourism destination, but now they're looking at the summer perspective, summer tourism perspective, and see mountain biking as a, as a key to that. Um, the Hallandale region has, as part of this, invested heavily. Um, what can you explain the rationale behind that with your work with the, the and 
Uh, sorry, Catherine, I was just wondering, can you just repeat the, the last part of your question? Because you, uh, your, your, vo your sound is really low. So I don't know if you can move maybe closer to the mic. That would help a lot. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I was just saying that the part of that better. As part of uh, the kind of transition tourism destination to summer tourism destination, the Hallandor region has invested in mountain biking and invested in the education of trail builders to, to achieve that. And I wondered if you could explain the rationale behind, behind that and how it relates to the DERP project. Yeah, I, I can. Um, so, um, as you says, uh, as you say, traditionally the Hallingdal region is is really big in winter. In fact, it's the biggest tourism region in in in, in all of Norway. And uh, and um, so we have had an interest in order to to sort of bridge uh, to 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 bridge the, the gap from for a lot of businesses struggling to make an all year operation and employing people all all year round to to increase. Um, to increase business in the summertime. And then uh, our, our focus on mountain biking started around 2015. And, um, and we had a really thorough strategy process to really see sort of where, where opportun opportunities were in the mountain bike market. And um, uh, the, the Norwegian mountain bike community is quite small, really. So a consequence of that process was that we, we understood that our main target group is in fact not the current mountain bike market of Norway. It's in fact, the people who haven't started riding yet. And uh, of course, like I said, we, had a lot, we have a lot of people here in the winter time who are active families and who enjoy spending time outdoors and, and, and they're, they're quality conscious and they, they expect to have a wide um, variety of, 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 of slopes and uh, uh, ski slopes and uh, cross country tracks. And um, so, looking at what we had in front of our door a step we understood that the trails here they were just way too hard the barrier was way too big for the this new market to actually enter uh, the mountain bike uh, activity so so that's what actually started our focus on on developing this new infrastructure of primarily uh, green and blue difficulty uh, the trails uh, and um, and uh, that, of course, also ties into the dirt project because uh, who's going to build those trails? <laughs> we didn't have any trail building community here, and certainly not one that was capable of delivering trails of sort of uh, uh, um, high, high enough quality and with the right competence to sort of build sustainably and, and, and so on and so forth. So, so more or less our development of trail infrastructure has has been going hand in hand with developing the local trail trail building uh, community. We're currently investing 20 million euros, um, and we're about halfway since we started in 2015. Um, the current project phase will probably end in uh, three to four years. Um, what we see is that through sort of nurturing the trail building community, we've also spiraled the trail building industry to to grow significantly. So uh, from having one employed trail builder in 2016, we currently have the two of the biggest trail building companies uh, located in the Hallingdal region. They employ a total of 30 uh, full-time trail builders at the moment. So, so you can say that it's, 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 certainly, it's certainly been a, been a, been a, a journey from, from the start of this, uh, this process. And of course, uh, uh, having formed more or less a new industry, that's where the dirt project and sort of the formalization of the trail, the trail building competence uh, comes in and becomes necessary in, in order for us to secure that. We have, we have the right uh, people to build uh, trails and that the trail building company can actually, they can actually hire people with the right, with the right uh, competence. And also in the competition with general construction companies and, and I would say amateurs coming in and competing on price, they can also uh, they can also sort of win that competition by showing that they have a formal they have a formal um, competence in, in trail building. So so more or less I mean the the the, the trail the dirt project has been the natural next step for, for, for the development that we have had in, in the Hallingdal region, I would say. And that seems like a huge investment, really, um, for for the region. 
spot, um, you mentioned you mentioned families, you mentioned beginners, you mentioned bikers. Um, what specific, what other target audiences are you uh, looking to to reach with um, with in, in Hallingdal, and um, what has what's been the return on investment for the region? I guess beyond um, beyond the perhaps tourism income. Yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> It's, it's, it's clear that as, a, as a, one of the leading uh, regions for winter tourism, I mean, uh, that goes hand in hand with having a strong local uh, skiing culture. And, and that's a culture that we've been, we've been building over years and years and years. And, 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 and it's actually been, been, an, been a clear focus for us that if we're gonna build a destination, um, one of the best mountain bike destinations in, in Scandinavia, which is the, the goal of this project, we also need to nurture a strong local riding community. Uh, so, 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 uh, sort of the, the 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 steps that we are taking have been really focusing on 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 also building local facilities, building pump tracks close to schools, uh, around the village centers, so that we can we can get uh, kids, and parents into riding. And I think, I think we need we need people who works in the tourism industry we need locals who guests will meet when they come here to reflect mountain biking as well because that is what eventually is going to give us sort of the authenticity as a mountain bike uh, as a mountain bike destination we can't just i mean mountain biking is not just a product it's not just something that we do it's something that it's something that we are and and and, and uh, that's that's obviously in not something that we solve in the five years that we've been working uh, and um, I would love to present um, present uh, impact study that could show exactly what we what we got back from 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 the investments investments we've done so far we're actually doing a study next year but so far we can see that it's it's definitely the interest is picking up all around uh, amongst guests but also among the local kids we see mountain bikes lined up um, by the schools and we see that the mountain bike uh, trail centers and uh, pump tracks have become new uh, hangouts uh, that we didn't have previously. So suddenly the, the kids who normally hang out in the ski resort in the winter, they now have a similar place that they can actually hang out and socialize in the summertime. So, um, so it's a huge deal for us. Yeah, just before we bring in Diana on the, on the tourism front, the research that she's been doing, Mathilde, um, from your experience in, in Denmark, um, why do these municipalities believe it's important to invest in mountain biking infrastructure and what's, what's their return on investment in Denmark? Yeah, um, in the three municipalities that uh, we have examined, uh, there seems to be uh, several reasons for investing in these mountain bike trails. Uh, first of all, uh, the municipalities um, find it important in a health promotion context, um, providing better possibilities for nature experiences at a, and different kind of sports um, are, are seen to, to um, provide um, better health uh, for citizens and well-being. And uh, furthermore, they see a potential in the, in the trails uh, in terms of attracting tourists and uh, new residents to the municipality. Uh, actually, they, they um, see these trails as a way to brand the municipality and to, uh, and to create um, a clear uh, local identity. Uh, the hope is that by supporting uh, the volunteers, uh, the municipalities can help create um, active and attractive uh, local communities within the municipality. And then, um, then they also seem to, uh, to think that, that by supporting uh, the trail builders in building uh, attractive and, uh, and exciting uh, sustainable trails, they can help uh, guide the traffic in the nature areas in a way that it uh, becomes possible to take care of nature and, uh, and uh, in a way that it also leaves, leaves space for, for um, different kind of user groups and not only mountain bikers. Okay, 
No, that's really, that is really interesting. And you can see that there are clear links between the local community and building the local community and then starting to build a tourism destination around mountain biking. And I'd just like to ask Diana about your research, which um, led to the report, when we can travel again, which is, which is the question that everyone is asking at the moment. And it has uncovered some really interesting findings with regard to the recommendations for travel industry itself and also with regard to traveler behavior and um and potential traveler behavior so from the industry perspective what we've seen from what we've seen in the travel industry is uh in response to covid19 in response to this um the cessation of travel is um the way that they have responded is with innovation and diversification um do you, in your opinion, and looking at the research that you've carried out, do you think this was the push that the travel and tourism needed towards moving more purposefully uh, in the direction of a more sustainable model? Well, uh, thank you, Catherine, and good afternoon to everyone. <laughs> well, I believe uh, since the pandemic started, uh, there are uh, two very common words. <laughs> one of them was to uh, reinvent and the other one was to adapt, right? So we've seen that um, in terms of innovation in, in tourism products and the safety and security of destinations, it has actually been a very important factor for the industry survival. Um, we can see that innovation is actually a very good competitive uh, advantage for businesses, uh, for operators, and for destinations as well. And we can definitely see how it can increase uh, destination attractiveness and also tourism business uh, attractiveness as well. And for the tourist and the local community, it can actually um, increase their level of satisfaction, for example, for tourists, because they, they can have an actual a better uh, tourism experience and for the local community because um, they couldn't stand before the, the pressures, the pressure of tourism anymore, right? Um, in terms of moving from um, from uh, mass tourism or less responsible uh, practices towards a more sustainable uh, tourism model, model that was actually needed before even the pandemic started because uh, we all know that our resources are, are finite, right? Um, we all know that uh, the community has to has to be happy and with the tourism development, and um, and we have seen that uh, since the pandemic has started, um, people actually under, understood the importance of connecting with local cultures, uh, with the heritage of the places that they're visiting, um, having a responsible use of, of their resources. And, and also about exploring destinations of, of proximity. Um, I will say that with uh, sustainability um, for the tourism industry and for many industries, uh, it's not an option anymore, but it's rather um, the road, the, the roadmap to, to survival of, of the industry. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I think that's, well, it's what we've kind of been hearing uh, previously as well, is it's, it's not an option anymore. It's, it's not a luxury, it's something that, that we, it's a road we have to take. Um, and ha having listened a bit to uh, the other speakers, to, to Lars and to Mathilde and the, the work that they've done um, in, their, in their mountain biking communities, how do you see mountain bike tourism playing a part in this more sustainable future of travel? Well, uh, from, uh, from listening to Matilde and, and Lars, I believe um, one of the important factors here is actually to integrate uh, the local community and see how, for example, biking tourism can support the local infrastructure and also the local community, as Lars was, was, was actually saying with the kids. Now the kids have a mean of entertainment and they they might be using their time to, to do this type of activity, right? Um, I believe in terms of uh, sustainability for um, for the biking tourism uh, to be more sustainable, actually all the stakeholders need to be compromised with, with sustainability. And um, how can we do this? Well, 
as I said before, we, we actually need to integrate all everyone in this and, for example, integrate the local community in all the stages of planning and development uh, of the trails, for example. Um, we need to see as well if the trails are are actually integrating with the, with the natural environment, right? It's very important that um, we actually conserve the, the biodiversity of, of the area. And for example, if there has to be a caring capacity study to see if uh, how many tourists uh, the area can support. Uh, these are the, the type of things that, that we need to look at. And in terms of the, the community, we, we need to see as well that if there is any way of uh, an economic gain that, that can support the, the development of the community and and also maybe it's something to create more jobs and and these kind of things that, that we need that we actually need to look at. Yeah I think I think the message that is coming quite loud and clear from everyone is is of collaboration, is of finding and it's not necessarily one model of collaboration, it's um the model of collaboration that works for your area. Um, mm -hmm. And also this idea of having a really strong local mountain bike community as the foundations upon which um, mountain bike tourism can more widely can then can then flourish as well. And I think that's um, I think that's a really good message, and it's it's something that we have seen in various destinations, and we're seeing seeing in Denmark and Hallingdal, and um, it's it's really good to get your input in that. Um, we have a few questions actually that have come from that have come from the audience and um, first of all actually Mathilde um, we have a question about uh, a very practical question about insurance and liability um, how do trail associations um, or trail builders you know these, these um, stakeholders that you've talked about how are they managing risk? How are they dealing with insurance and liability? And who takes on that responsibility? Um, actually, the responsibility and the risk is up to the, each uh, association of the trail builders or the single group of trail builders. It's not uh, the municipality who take that responsibility. Okay. Um, it's always the trail association that takes on that. Or the, or the single or the, the individual person's uh, insurance, actually, yeah. Yeah, and is that the same in, in Norway, Lars? Is that how that works with insurance? Uh, on the, the volunteer level, um, that would be your own private insurance. That's, that's correct. And of course, as a professional trail builder, you would have a, a, an insurance covering. Okay. Yeah. And... Yeah, another another one for you, Lars, um, is about maybe uh, after um, after the the session, if you could share, if you've got some case studies um, that you would be happy to share that um, that people can can learn from uh, in order to convince um, to convince their local municipalities that hiring a trail building team is 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 worthwhile and will show return on investment. So. Uh, got some learning and case study to share on that that would be that would be fantastic i have a much better idea i think everybody should come here and have a look for uh, yeah. one of the next summits so oh, i'll see what i can find <laughs> I, so, mean, yeah. I think we're all going to come uh, absolutely um well i think that i think as far as i can tell that is us at our time and i would just really like to thank everyone for your for your contribution it's been um incredibly insightful and interesting and yeah lots lots to talk about and lots of lots of great examples of collab collaboration out there and i'm sure uh, people who are are listening are very keen to hear more about that so thank you very much catherine thank you very much and once again our virtual applause to the to the panel for the, those thoughts there i'm just hanging on there wait a minute there's 30 people employed in one location in trail building. That's, wow, let's hang on to that for our kind of economic impact and our post COVID and uh, kind of one of our case studies. That's that's quite exciting. Uh, I think we could all imagine that uh, if we had that in our own municipality, in our own location. We, we'll compete with you last right, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, kind of get the benefits. Um, 
but then my job just to conclude we have slightly overrun um but uh, it's been an absolute pleasure once again to be to the Inver summit uh I, I'm now looking forward to the moment we all dash outside and we ride up a mountain together and then we come back for a kind of cool beer at the end of that. But so you can all do that at your own homes and in, in spirit of the Imba community. So I, I hope you do. Um, but thank you to everybody that's contributed to all of the panels, to our keynotes especially, and to our moderators. Um, Catherine, you mentioned several times in your last wrap up there that collaboration is the word. And I think it's come out over and over it's everybody's responsibility. Somebody said, you know, it's a chance to bring things together. And if I could but share that with everybody in terms of closing words on behalf of Imba Europe, its partners, its supporters like Cycling Industries Europe, that um, we're building the community, we hope, back better at the local level, the regional level, the national level. And, and we know there's a base for a stronger international community of mountain biking. And, and that's the role we take on as Imba Europe. Um, slowly over the next coming months, and so you will hear more from us, not only about our membership models, but also as we build network opportunities for people who are in charge of local places through things like the DIRT project, we build outcomes that are good for professionals to use in your work. And overall, we, we kind of travel together. So what I, I hope very much is that everybody kind of stays in touch they you're registered for in the newsletters you're in communities but as we build the working communities around our new imba mission um that we are working on inclusion that we are working on sustainability and we are working on great places and with all the returns and all the benefits so thank you everyone be part of the community enjoy your riding uh have a fabulous summer and we will see you as part of the Imba Europe community in coming years and months. Thank you very much.